Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture I will continue with the subgroups ok. So, I will introduce uh, some more uh, subgroups that we can actually construct inside our group and again uh, all these constructions are very abstract constructions. So, we will actually see some examples to demonstrate uh, all these constructions ok. So, let us uh, fix some notation before starting. So, as before we take G to be a group. So, now <coughs> what we want to do? So, we take some subset S of G ok. So, now I want to talk about group generated by this subset ok. So, what we want to do? We want to talk about the subgroup generated by this capital S ok. So, first of all what is the meaning of this? Let us actually think about it. So, theoretically speaking it is not that hard to define what is this group generated by S ok. So, basically you look for all subgroups that containing S ok. So, if you want some subgroup that is actually generated by S, then it should contain all possible multiplications of elements of S, inverses of S and all combinations of that ok. But theoretically speaking, so that must be the smallest group with respect to the containment and that contains S ok. So, we recall a fact and that fact actually guarantees given any subset S you always have the subgroup generated by S. So, what is that fact? It is about intersection of subgroups. Suppose you have a collection of subgroups inside G call it H alpha. So, this is the collection of subgroups of G ok. So, then what we can do? We can talk about the intersection of all these subgroups ok. So, what is this? It is those elements inside G such that this x should be in H alpha for all alpha in I. So, now what we can prove? This is also a subgroup of G. So, how do you prove? So, recall that to prove something is a subgroup, it is enough to prove that you take two elements A, B in that subset and you consider the product A, B inverse that should be again in that subset that is what we to verify ok. So, let us try to verify that you start with A, B inside this intersection H alpha alpha in I. So, what we want to prove? So, we need to prove that A, B inverse is also inside this intersection ok. This is one of the characterization of subgroups that we proved in the earlier class. So, let us see why it is true. So, since A B is actually inside in the intersection, you know that A B both of them must be in H alpha for all alpha in I ok. So, we have A B is in H alpha for all alpha in I because both A B they are elements of intersection of H alpha. So, now if you think about it H alpha are all subgroups that is given. So, that means this implies A B inverse should be in H alpha for all alpha in I. Then this implies the product A B inverse must be in the intersection of H alpha alpha in I ok. So, this is what we need to verify. So, that is verified. So, that means arbitrary intersection of subgroups must be subgroup ok and it is not hard to see the union will never be actually unions need not be subgroups ok. 
So, you can take integers itself and then try to actually think about some counter example there. Okay. Now, how it actually helps us to actually construct the subgroup generated by S. So, let us see what we can do. So, we start with S being a subset of G. So, now what I can do? I can construct this collection. So, you take all possible subgroups of G such that S is contained in H. So, what is this? H is a subgroup of G and then S is contained in H. So, this collection must be non-empty because G is one such element. Okay, G is already in this collection. Call this collection A. Okay. So, now what I can do? I can actually just take intersection of all these subgroups. Okay, that is allowed. I can take all this H where H is coming from A. So, since this in collection is non-empty, this intersection makes sense and this intersection from the fact that we proved earlier becomes actually a subgroup. So, this is a subgroup of G. Note that since S is contained in H for all H in this A. So, S is contained in H for all H in A. So, that would imply that this S is contained in this intersection. Okay. And we have one more property. If I take any other H dash which contains S and H dash is a subgroup of G. So, then it is immediate that this intersection of H, H in A must be contained in H dash. Why? Because this implies H dash is inside this collection. Okay. So, this says this is actually the smallest group, this is the smallest. So, smallest means what with respect to the inclusion that smallest subgroup that contains yes. Okay. So, it is meaningful to call this subgroup as subgroup generated by S. Yes. So, because you need all elements of S yes to get this subgroup. If you miss something, there is a chance that the subgroup may go down, okay. the intersection may go down. Okay, this is somewhat theoretical way of understanding the subgroup generated by S. So, this actually guarantees that there exists the smallest subgroup that contains S. Okay. So, I say that it is actually the smallest. I will leave it to you to actually think about why it is unique. So, what I mean by that? So, you have to actually first write down what is the meaning of uniqueness here and what is the meaning of smallest. So, if you write down that more or less it is easy. So, maybe let, let me do it. Suppose you have let us say H1 that is some subgroup containing S and say it is smallest. Okay. So, let us say smallest subgroup containing capital S. Similarly, H2 is also smallest subgroup containing S. So, what is the meaning of that? If S is contained in H1 and H2 and whenever there is another group H dash and you have another group H dash that contains S, then that should imply that H dash contains H1. So, that, that is the meaning of the smallest. Okay. So, now you can see that you can change the role play. So, if you use H2 in, in the place of H dash, then you can see that H2 contains H1 and similarly H1 contains H2 and then this would imply that H1 equal to H2. Okay. 
So, that is why it is the smaller subgroup that contains S. So, that is the smallest is possible that is because intersection of subgroups must be subgroup. So, for example, you can take H1 intersection H2. So, that is again a subgroup that contained in both H1 and H2 and that also contains S. Okay. So, H1, H2 cannot be smaller than H1. In that case, then H1 intersection H2 becomes somewhat smaller okay, with respect to the containment. So, that is why H1 should be equal to H1 intersection H2 and then which is same as H2. Okay. So, okay. so, here we are talking about actually somewhat there is a partial order okay. and then with respect to that partial order. So, the partial order is defined on the set of all subgroups of G that contains S. Okay. The partial order is given by just set inclusion. So, in that partial order with respect to that partial order set inclusion on this collection of subgroups of G that contains S, we are saying that you have unique minimal element. So, that min unique minimal element you can call it minimum or the, the smallest. Okay. So, that is what we are doing. Okay. So, now let us try to understand more about this uh, subgroup in, in a more practical way. For example, if I take some element A in A. Okay. So, before that let us introduce one notation. So, here is the notation. So, because this subgroup generated by S that is unique, we can denote it by just angled bracket S by the subgroup generated by capital S. Okay. So, now given this A in A, I can also talk about the subgroup generated by A. So, then in the earlier class I told this must be exactly same as A power k, k coming from integers. So, one thing to notice the set on the right side, side it is a subgroup and it contains A and obviously it is the smallest group contains A because any other subgroup that contains A will contain all A power k, all the integral power of A. Okay. So, that is why this is the smallest. So, this is the smallest subgroup containing A or this is the subgroup generated by A. So, now let us take okay, for example, two elements and then see what happens. Okay. So, let us first look at some example, let us not get into the abstract thing. So, let us look at concrete example, let us take Z plus. So, we know that it is a group. Okay. So, here we can talk about for example, uh, subgroup generated by some subset. Okay. So, let us take for example, 2, 1, 3. Okay. So, then what will be the subgroup generated by 2, 1, 3? Okay. Let us look at what will be the possibility. So, we already know that any subgroup of z must be of the form some n z. Okay. So, it is enough to def, uh, determine what is that n. So, let us write down this as n z. Okay. But if you do not like this, maybe we can directly do it that is also a problem. So, let us do it in two different ways. First, let us do using our result. So, you take subgroup generated by 2, 3, call it n z. So, now what do you want to do? You want to determine the n. Okay. So, what is the property? So, this 2 is inside n h. So, that means what? 2 can be written as n times some d 1. So, that means n divides 2. Okay. Similarly, 3 is inside n h and that means n divides 3. So, n divides both 2 and 3 and n is now coming from we can take it to be non-negative integer. Okay. Otherwise, we can replace by minus n there is no issue. So, you have a non-negative integer and that actually divides both 2 and 3. 
it cannot be 0 because then n is at become 0. So, 2, 3 are there. So, n is non-zero and natural number that dividing 2 and 3 because 2 and 3 are relatively prime you can easily conclude that n must be 1. So, that means this subgroup generated by 2, 3 must be just integers. Okay, let us look at this from the different point of view just from arbitrary group theory point of view. So, we take this subgroup generated by 2, 3 and then see what are all the possible elements that it should have. So, a moment thought will reveal that it should contain, okay, it should contain all possible integral combination of 2, 1, 3. Okay. Why? Because first of all 2 is there, so any multiple of 2 which will be 2 plus 2 plus 2, so positive multiple must be there, it is inverse the negative multiple must be there. Similarly, multiple of 3 positive as well as negative must be there and their combination should be there. So, the subgroup generated by 2, 3 must be containing all this. But you take this set on the right hand side. So, then look at this. So, this is 2 n 1 plus 3 m 1 okay. and then if you subtract with some 2 n 2 plus 3 m 2. So, then see what you are getting. Then you can see that this is nothing but 2 n 1 minus m 2 plus 3 m 1 minus m 2. So, this is again some multiple of 2 plus some multiple of 3. So, integral linear combination of 2 and 3. So, if I take A minus B where A B is coming from this set in this set. okay. So, then you can see that this is A and this is B minus B. Okay. If I take A B here and then A minus B is again inside this set. So, that tells that this 2 n plus 3 m is already a subgroup. So, because it is already a subgroup this must be contained in this subgroup generated by 2, 3 that tells that the subgroup generated by 2, 3 must be of the form 2 n plus 3 m where n m are in each end. But you already know that since 2 and 3 are relatively prime, so there exist some n naught m naught such that 2n0 plus 3m0 equal to 1. Okay. So, 2n0 plus 3m0 equal to 1. So, this subgroup must contain 1. So, once I know that this must contain 1, so then all multiples of 1 must be there. So, that means this should contain each end. Okay. So, then that means this subgroup generated by 2, 3 must be equal to each end. Okay. So, similarly you can actually try to play around and then see what will happen. So, I leave one exercise. So, this is something simple. Start with some a 1 etcetera a k from e z and then if you are interested in the subgroup generated by a k. So, then it has two description as before. So, first of all it is some d z and then you can determine what is the d. Okay. So, first of all this must be equal to some n 1 a 1 plus etcetera plus n k a k all integral combination of this a 1 etcetera a k where this n 1 etcetera n k they are all integers. So, this is the description of the subgroup and you can also say that this is d z and this d should be exactly equal to g c d of a 1 etcetera a k. Okay. For example, this a 1 etcetera a k, so that lie inside d z. Okay. So, this a i is inside d z, so that imply that d divides a i. Okay. So, that will imply that d divides the g c d of 
a1 etc ak. So now what we need to prove? So we need to prove that so since d divides this so this already tells you that so if you call this as some d1 okay so then the d1 is nothing but multiple of d so that means d1 is inside dz okay so that means if i take d1 z that should be contained in dz okay but you already know that so the gcd can also be written as some integral combination of this a1 etc ak okay so if i take the gcd so that is d1 which is gcd of a1 etc ak so then it can be written as there exist okay some m1 etc mk such that this is a1 m1 plus etc plus ak mk so this is something you must have learned it in elementary number theory okay so that implies that this d1 is indeed inside this set okay yeah so now what we want to prove uh, so we already have that actually yeah so because uh, yeah because we already have d device d1 so because d is uh, great d1 is the greatest common divisor sorry this should be the other way if d device ai for all i okay so then this d1 should divide okay so let us take for example 2 4 so then the gcd of that is just 2 okay so 2 divides maybe this is not good example let us take something bigger so let us take uh, Six and eighteen. So then you can see that GCD is six because six divides both. Okay. Suppose something divides. So two divides both six and eighteen. So that implies two divides six. Okay. So what I wrote was correct. So D divides D one. Okay, now what we want to prove? We want to prove that uh, D must be the GCD. Okay, so now D is already uh, divides D1, so that is why we get that D1 is EZ is contained in DZ. So now you can see that uh, D1 is already combination of all these things okay so now what do we want to say mm, yeah d is the smallest greatest common divisor among all of them okay uh, ah yeah so you already know that d1 device ai for all i okay so in particularly if you can write if you can prove that these two are same 
these two are same. So, that means d must be of the form some n 1 a 1 plus etcetera n k a k. So, then that would imply that d 1 must divide ok. So, that would imply d 1 equal to d. Yeah. But it is not hard to prove these two are equal. So, the subgroup generated by a 1 etcetera a k is same as all possible integral linear combination of a 1 etcetera a k ok. So, now using the definition of GCD of a 1 etcetera a k and this being the generator you can simply verify that d must be the GCD of a 1 etcetera a k. So, we have already done that ok. So, I will leave it to you to check this is exactly same as this. Okay. So, now uh, let us go back to the abstract group and then see what will happen if we consider the subgroup generated by any set S. Okay. So, just for simplicity let us first take S being actually two elements. So, if S is singleton then we already saw how the subgroup generated by that singleton A looks ok. If S is empty then the subgroup generated by S must be identity because that is the smallest group containing empty set. So, now let us look at uh, two elements A comma B and then I am interested in understanding what will be the subgroup generated by this. So, you can see that definitely so if you call this is H ok. So, let us call it HS. So, definitely the all the integral powers of A must be there and all integral powers of B must be there ok for any k and k dash inside H. So, this this must be there in that subgroup. So, now we can also take this product between them ok. You can take a power k b power k dash. So, this is also should be inside your hs. But note that these are all the only elements ok. The thing is if you are working in general group ok which may not be commutative. So, in particularly a b may not be same as b ok this can happen. For example, if you take a set of all invertible matrices even 2 by 2 invertible matrices it is not hard to find two elements such that the product of those two elements a b is not same as b a ok. So, that means this is there, but again this is also there. Okay. So, you have to consider all these possibilities, but are they all the elements? So, let us look at. So, H s definitely contains elements of the form A k B k dash and then some B l and then A l dash where k is coming from e z ok all, all of them let us write uh, k k dash l l dash all of them are from it ok. So, this is definitely contained in h s ok. So, now whether these are all the only things we can just try to verify. So, if you start with some word ok. So, this is basically what you are trying to do you are abstractly trying to determine what are all the possi possible elements that can lie inside the subgroup generated by AB ok. So, you have to consider all possible words ok. So, the product of elements of G they are called words ok. So, you have to consider all possible product of words that you can perform using AB. So, note that A is there, B is there that implies A inverse is there, B inverse is there in HS. So, now 
definitely you have to consider all the words that you can actually get using these four letters. For example, A, B, A, A, B and then A inverse, B inverse and so on, something like this, okay. But if you think about it, so this also can be grouped as follows so like A and then B and then A square and then B and then A inverse, B inverse, maybe let us start stop with B inverse then it becomes B square. So now, so this element that I consider karna A, B, A, 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 B, A inverse, B inverse, B inverse. So this is also there in the group. So this must be inside your, sorry, inside your HS, okay. So that means something like this A, B, A square B is inverse B minus 2. So that is also inside your S. Yes. So that means these are all not the only type of elements that you can actually get. So you can also get something like this, okay. So A power some K1, B power some K2 and then similarly you go like some A power K3 and B power some K4. Okay. So, these are all the elements, these elements also must be there because A, B do not commute. So, for example, something like this also should be there. But what is about again adding something more here A power K5 and then B power K6. So, this is also should be there and then you can see that any finite string or finite word like this must be there inside HS. Okay. So, that means, so for example, A cube B power minus 2, A B power 3 and then A power minus 2, B power minus 1. So, this should be inside your HS. Okay. So, since they do not commute, so this word must be included, there is no option. So, this suggests that you take all possible things like this a power b power k2 and then a power okay so what i call k3 b power k4 and so on so now it may end with a so where let's say some kr or it may end with b also okay so maybe the best way to actually write down this we can write it as tuples a power k1 b power k2 and then a power m1 uh, maybe i will put one on the top 1 1 1 2 b power k2 2 and so on a power k 1 some r b power k to r. So, now you allow all integral powers some of them could be 0. So, all these elements should be inside your HS. So, then your HS if you think about it, if you take words of the form and then if you take the inverse of that, you can see that okay, this is just a simple exercise. So, if I have a product of elements, let us say k elements inside G. So, call it x. So, then x inverse will be exactly equal to you reverse the product a k inverse etcetera a 1 inverse. For example, a b inverse is b inverse a inverse. Okay. So, this is your x inverse. So, prove that this is the x inverse. Okay. With this exercise, you can see that if I take this x, then x inverse will be again b minus k2 r, a power minus k1 r and so on, b k, k, k1 2 and then minus b minus k1 1. Okay. So, that means if I collect all the elements of this form a k1 1 b k2 1 and so on a 
K1 R B K2 R where all this KJs are coming from a jet this itself form a group form a subgroup and obviously it contains A B. So, this is the subgroup generated by A B. You can see that if you want to give this general description using only A B for elements of H S you have to allow all these possibilities ok all the words. Obviously, there will be some relations we will talk about relations later. Uh, if we use those relations, so we may actually end up getting very less elements ok. It can happen that it can become finite if you are in the finite group, but if when you think abstractly you have to allow all possible words like this. So, I will leave it to you to think about what will happen if you take uh, some finite set S yes, and then if you deal with that, if you call this S as some let us say A 1 etcetera some A k then you try to get description for this H s ok. So, basically you take this S and then S inverse and then you take all possible words that you can form from those letters A 1 etcetera A k and A 1 inverse etcetera inverse and then take possible products in any order and that will be your H s ok you will be able to prove that is actually the subgroup smallest subgroup containing S. So, I will give very explicit description in the problem sheet and then you can try to do it ok. I will stop here we are running out of time thanks.